Well, hello, sunshine. What do we got cool going on today? I always think we got something cool, don't I? I always say, man, I got something awesome for you today or whatever. I ain't trying to BS you. I always think it's awesome. I guess I'm easily amused. I got an MS-361 here. Uh, I'll tell you what I've done to it in just a minute. But that's not the awesome, awesome part. Uh, we're going to put it on dyno. And that's not the awesome part, necessarily. The awesome part? I've wrote some new programs for my dyno. Um, just, and anybody that's here before I'll, knows, but I'll say, and we got a lot of things we can do with the dyno. Uh, I'll tell everybody that may be seeing this for the first time. Uh, between heat runs and fuel consumption and checking uh, temperature and uh, exhaust gases and, and various different things, right? But, and I'm going to toot my own horn and say my dyno's been tested amongst the best. Uh, it, we've run the same saws on mine and another, I'm going to say famous dyno, I'm not going to drop his name, and we was right in there. I'm proud of my dyno, right, because I built it myself. And my software I built myself. Well, I also built recently a data collection. So used to be I'd have to uh, video record with my phone everything that was going on on the uh, RPMs and one thing and another and heat and, and load cells, right? Uh, I've got it on automatic uh, data, data logging now. And that's good and that's bad. It's good. It's great because, hey, I don't have to go through there frame by frame and pick those numbers out anymore and manually type them in my spreadsheet, my software that does the calculations for horsepower, uh, corrections, um, weather corrections, all that stuff. Uh, that's all in a different program, and I have to hand type that in there. I don't have to do that anymore. My new program saves it to a CSV. I can just copy and paste that, drop that right there in my spreadsheet. In two minutes, I've got a chart and uh, everything. It's not automatic like some of them are. Don't want mine automatic. But, the I said that's good and that's bad. What's bad about it? Well, what's bad about it is I built it. Um, and it's like a chainsaw. Now, this here chainsaw is not mine, so I'm going to send it down the road and I won't mess with it again until, well, until it don't work right and he brings it back. If it needs carburetor adjusted, that's this guy will bring it back. Um, my saws, other than the ones I cut firewood with, I'm always dinking with them, right? I'm never satisfied. I got to keep tearing it apart and doing other things. And kind of that way with my software too. I keep upgrading it and upgrading it and upgrading it and tweaking it. Um, this one here, you might have seen it before on that Husky. I've run it on that Husky. Um, but on the other hand, I used to take one or two or three dyno runs, go through them, pick the best one out. Not necessarily the best one, the, the, the best example uh, of the saw. <clears throat> I can take multiple dyno runs now. That, that, so if I, uh, that leaves me up there a little bit. I like that. Um, it took so long to put in dyno runs. A lot of times I'd have took this saw uh, and I'll t now's a good time as any to tell you what's in it. Uh, this saw come to me, it didn't run right, and I pulled the carburetor off. The metering diaphragm was a little stiff, <clears throat> but I didn't think it was stiff enough to keep it from running right. Right now, it could have been. It could have been. Um, bottom line, I, I rebuilt the car, started to rebuild the carburetor, didn't have the kit for it. Ordered, uh, ordered a kit. That's out of order, but I ordered a kit. In the meantime, I checked, I pulled vacuum on it, and the daggum thing leaked right under, in between the cylinder and the base gasket, and it didn't blow the base gasket out. <clears throat> Nothing was disruptive, but uh, soap water, you could see it leaking, and then when I took it apart, you could see evidence it was leaking. So we took about eight thousandths off the base just to clean that up and run our squish down around twenty thousandths. The cylinder was, uh, it'd been run lean. It, the cylinder was smeared on the intake side, cleaned up, did I say cylinder? The piston was scored on the intake side. I cleaned up a cylinder <coughs> and called Ryan at Wolf Creek. We got us a highway piston we put in here. He sent me the, the carb kit for it um, and a set of caber rings for it. 
Now, why is the caber rings important? Well, they ain't, but they are. Uh, before the dyno, the way it is now, I would have probably taken and put this thing in the woods for a tank or two of gas, right? Because I know these cabers are going to break in slow. Um, believe it or not, I'm looking at something right now. Um, not trying to ignore you, but I'm looking at something. I'm coming up. It's important. The fuel level is right here on this tank. Right here. Um, that's how much fuel's been through this saw. <clears throat> Uh, if you turn it on its side from where I filled it up, it'll look like more fuel levels down here. But we've had a little bit of fuel through this saw. But not even, not what I'd call half a tank, right? Uh, I'd have never dynoed them like that before. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to do a dyno run in this video. And then we'll probably put it in the wood and do a little bit of test cutting with it. See if we can get them broke in at least for a tank full see if we gain any compression and horsepower after a little bit and then um this video might be one of them we see this saw again in another year um i'll ask him hey after he's cut 10 or 15 tanks full i'll ask him to bring it back to me because i know it'll seat in them rings more and need uh need some carburetor adjusting but uh right now we're at about 145 psi on the uh static compression Original cylinder, highway piston, 20,000 squish. Piston started out at 65.01 grams. It's down to about 58.33. We took about 10% off that piston. Uh, caber rings and Warboro carb and a Holtz form of muffler. I ruined his muffler trying to mod it, so I pulled one off of one of my test mules, old Ruth. Um, and the only thing we did to mod that, I, I cut it apart, took the baffle out, and uh, yeah, let's get a let's get it just. Uh, we'll start her up. I've got my heat uh, my heat deal on there, so we can put her on dyno here in a minute. put her on dyno i guess i didn't do the timing numbers i'll tell you what they were stock uh da, 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 71 and a half for 143 uh degrees total opening uh the intake width was 59 percent the exhaust was at 104 uh for a width of 53 percent transfers at 130 and 133 squish stock was 32 thousandths we're at 20 now um, the base gasket was 20 thousandths thick. We're still running a base gasket. The original stock piston started out 68.41 grams. We're down to 58.33. Uh, piston pin, we chose the lightest one at 12.15 grams. Uh, after I took 8 thousandths off, there was no timing change other than what the 8 thousandths moved it, meaning I didn't touch a single, uh, a single timing number. I didn't, I never touched any of the port shapes i didn't i didn't even stick a piece of sandpaper nothing in uh, uh intake <clears throat> i polished the exhaust didn't even get inside to the chamfer um, i just cleaned it up because i had uh i had some daggum carbon in it so the way this saw is running he's building carbon so i polished his exhaust <sighs> barely touched the uppers and by that i mean i didn't get to the chamfering there was just a couple little Dad gum at Rice Krispies hanging on it. I just took him off a little bit. It's all I done. Um, lowers, but I did open the lowers, but I didn't change any timing. So we're, uh, and we've got a set of caber rings in it. Compression's 145. And it's got a whole form of muffler with the baffle removed. Of course, I've done said part of that. Um, but that's what it is. Now let's get her on dyno. Now, like I say, I keep messing around with this dyno software. But, well, same reason the dog licks his butt, just because it can. Uh, now, you guys that's been with me forever, this is going to change a little bit. And even the guys that's been here while I've been building this, there's a couple more videos of this one um, getting up to this point, and I keep changing it. And I've got some more changes on the way. 
uh, for other parts of it. This one here is probably going to remain about like this. Unless you guys tell me what you like to see different, we might we we still may change it. <clears throat> I've got enough uh, load cells and uh, Hall effect sensors that I'm still going to get my RPM range right here and right here. Now, you guys that's been watching me forever are used to seeing. Uh, this is raw data. This is the input shaft, so it's not taking into consideration the gear reduction, what size sprockets on the saw or anything like that. <clears throat> when this showed 7,000, it actually meant the saw was doing 10,000. Well, this one's taking the same reading, but seeing as how it's computerized, um, I just told it to tell me, I told it to do that calculation, right? Um... So this one's going to be close to the actual RPM. Um, it's not going to be the raw data. Um, and it's, this one's going to round to like 25 RPMs. That's just what I did. And it's going to refresh. Sorry, I was trying to be professional and point Regner. It's not going to refresh as fast as what my collection refreshment is because it's too hard to watch. Um, so I slowed this down. It's going to show in close to what the real RPMs of the saw is. Now, uh, this here number, when we get to pulling torque, um, let's say we'll hit 19 or 20 on that, um, which is about, um, it was like 0 .159 was the, was the factor, right? So it was, uh, <clears throat> I don't even want to try to do the math in my head because it's not working today. Uh, but we, if we'd hit uh, 20 on here, two zero point three digits past, uh, we were close to three foot-pounds of torque, right? Well, and that changes with what we've always got weather correction in here. Right now we're at 83.1% humidity, or degrees, 68% humidity, barometrics 29.23. All right. That changes actually what this torque is. But for visualization... This is not going to have the weather correction, but this is going to show RPMs that are close and torque that is close. Another thing that's going to happen when you see me start this, let me reach around here and get the mouse on there. When I hit start test, it's, it's going to give me time to get that uh, thing going starting in 3, 2, and it... <sighs> As soon as it drops below my RPM threshold, it stops it and saves it. So actually, it's already saved uh, a, a file with basically no data because it didn't um, have any data to save. So, uh, without further ado, let's get this thing on the dyno. You guys uh, have any questions about that? I'm not answering things very good. I don't know, a Sunday afternoon, I've had a couple bowls of loudmouth soup, and we're getting ready to have fun.
just real quick without walking to the house or nothing and getting a stand. I'm holding the phone with my hand, but I want to show you that just in a couple seconds, I was able to put the uh, uh, chart together. We're at 5.51 horsepower. This is run number two, uh, 3.14 foot pounds of torque. I fat fingered that a little bit. You can see over here, uh, our weather correction today is 1.077. Um, heck, while I'm, while I'm showing you, I just will show you everything. Uh, and I'm holding the phones with, with a hand, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, oh, uh, so here's all my raw data and it continues on down uh, that we had uh, this is things that are in my spreadsheet there's two magnets on my Hall effect sensor uh, I'm running a seven pin drive sprocket on uh, chainsaw 20 pin driven sprocket that's the that's the homemade sprocket down here that's 20 pin uh, the pump bearing and believe it or not 0 0.0625 uh, that's a measurement on uh, I, I, I'm not gonna give away the, I'm not gonna try to explain the calculation uh, that needs to be in there to overcome so I don't have to run just a general dyno correction uh, the chain torque that's where I check and see how much chain tension it takes to turn that salt makes a hell of a dip, heck of a difference um, I like the pump bearing that actually equates to 0 0.08 foot-pounds of torque, not much. The chain tension, even at 10 foot, uh, 10 inch-pounds, is 0.29 foot-pounds of torque. Um, and you could just take a dyno correction of 11%, uh, I think is what it is. Uh, but it doesn't matter. I calculate it if I can. My torque arm length is 2.242, uh, which gives us a factor of 2. That, that's used over here in another calculation. The air pressure correction, that is our weather correction for today. It is 1.077 at 82 and a half degrees, 67% humidity, 29.33 uh, on the old barometer. Uh, guys, don't put me, guys, I'm gonna ask you not to put me in a bad spot and ask you to give away all my calculations. I've got hundreds of hours in that. I'm not good at it and I've had help from other people. That's an excuse I'm gonna use. I'm not giving away. I'll tell you everything I did to build this dyno. Uh, my software's mine. Uh, I don't mean to be a jerk, and I'm not trying to be a jerk. You can buy it online. You can buy the software. It ain't as good as mine, and I'm not selling it. <laughs> and I ain't giving it away either. Uh, it's just mine. Uh, when I die, I come to my auction buyer. Ha <laughs> ha!